Welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshile and you're watching Oshi Reads. And here we are again. It's another year, another NaNoWriMo, and another opportunity for you to finally start writing that book you've always wanted to, or to pick back up that writing project you abandoned when 2020 went into the dumpster and caught on fire at the beginning of quarantine. Am I right? So yes, yeah, stay tuned if you want to kind of hear some motivational tips and suggestions. And also if you are on the fence about beginning NaNoWriMo this year, or if you are nervous and never done it before, stay tuned. Your girl has got you. I got you. So here you are. It is currently October 31st. Happy Halloween, everyone. And another NaNoWriMo begins in less than 24 hours. And let's say you've never participated in NaNoWriMo before and you've always wanted to, but something has always held you back. You've always wanted to write that story that has lived in your heart for so long, but you're afraid, you're scared. Well, let me just tell you, this is the absolute best time to take on that challenge because there's nothing like feeling the energy and the support from a community of writers who are all doing the same thing as you for an entire month in the year. For 30 days from November 1st until November 30th, all of us are coming together to attempt this thing called novel writing, right? And many of us are successful, whether it be your first time or your 10th or your fifth or your 100th, whether you're a published author or you're not, whether you write for a living or it's just a dream that you are working towards and you're trying to achieve. NaNoWriMo is the one time in the year. I mean, it is called National Novel Writing Month for a reason, but it's the one time in the year where we all come together as a community, those of us who think of ourselves as writers, whether it be our job description, our career or not. In our hearts, this is what we do. This is what we're passionate about. And for one month in the entire year, all of our collective energies are focused on the same objective, writing a novel. There's nothing like it. The energy is indescribable. The support is completely unprecedented, unlike any other time in the year. There is a built-in community. You can go on the NaNoWriMo site, connect with other writers. You know, you can actually go to write-ins. I'm not sure how things are gonna be with COVID. It depends on where you live and masks and social distancing and all that. So please be safe. But you can actually, maybe even there'll be Zoom write-ins this year, but you'll have support. You'll have people in your corner. You'll have people who are doing and attempting the same thing that you're trying to do for 30 whole days. This is the perfect time to do it. Let's say that you are someone who has participated in NaNoWriMo before, or let's say you're someone that does have a book that they've been working on. This is the perfect time to continue to utilize this time where for 30 days, you have that support, that community, that backup, that energy out in the universe, fueling everything. It's very powerful. When everyone is coming together to do the same thing, the atmosphere is charged, the inspiration will flow. And you know what? Why not? What is the downside? What is gonna, you know, what's the worst case scenario? Honestly, what do you have to lose? You might as well get started and you might as well get started this nano. Don't worry if you don't have your story planned out. You need to dedicate at least 30 minutes to an hour to get some type of rough sketch of what you want to write about, what topics, uh, if it's going to be fiction, nonfiction, what type of story you want to tell, you know, just the basics. You have to start somewhere, right? Just start writing on the blank page and you can even start with stream of consciousness. You can start with kind of an outline and see what happens. You know, you have nothing to lose really. And it's not too late. Some of you might say, oh, you know, NaNoWriMo starts tomorrow. It's way too late to start now. It is not too late, not at all. We still have time. Right now, as I'm filming this video, it's not even noon yet, Eastern Standard Time. So you still have plenty of time to begin if you dedicate the rest of today and maybe even day one of NaNoWriMo to doing a quick rough outline of what type of story you're writing and what you're trying to achieve with the story and the main plot points you can definitely get started with just that. A lot of times you start writing a story and 
you know, things don't go as planned. As you actually start writing the story, things change, characters change, plots change. You find out things that you didn't know when you were at the beginning and sometimes you have to completely scrap your idea or revamp it or reform it. So don't let the idea of, or the fact of not having a story idea or not having an outline stop you because even if you do, for a lot of us, once you start writing, so many things can change within the process that your story could turn out completely different from the idea you had in the beginning or the outline you had in the beginning anyway. So that's just not a good excuse to not start now. Throw the idea of winning NaNoWriMo out the window. Yes, the point is to write 50,000 words in 30 days and to come out with the completed first draft, but that's not really the point. It's the point, but it's not the point. The point is to start that novel. The point is to write every day. The point is to form a community. The point is to feel supportive. The point is to finally fulfill that dream of writing that story or at least beginning it or at least getting something on the page. Whether you end up with 50,000 words or not by November 30th, whether, whether you end up with a completed first draft or not by November 30th, whether you win NaNoWriMo or not, this pure satisfaction comes from the fact that you have finally started. Whether it's a story you've been working on for years or one that you've always thought about but have never had the guts to write down or something that you are revamping, whatever it is, the satisfaction comes from actually attempting and getting something done, being on the journey. The destination of 50,000 words, you would be surprised. That's not really what's going to fill you with accomplishment, achievement, a fulfillment at the end, what fills you with accomplishment, achievement, and fulfillment is the fact that you attempted it and that you're on the road, you're on the journey, you have begun. Yes, it's nice to, you know, do the 50,000 words and hit that checkpoint and, and meet that goal. It is nice. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It does feel good. But even for those who don't win NaNoWriMo, if you've never won before, if you're afraid and that's what's holding you back is being able to write 50,000 words in 30 days, don't let that stop you. Don't let the fear of not winning NaNoWriMo and not achieving the 50,000 word count goal by the end, don't let that be the reason that you don't start because you get such a feeling of happiness and joy from doing what you're passionate about, which is writing, of finally letting those characters have their day and you know letting them speak to you and finally writing down what they're saying and finally letting them tell their story that's where the true satisfaction and the joy comes from of spending each day doing something that you're passionate about and doing something that you love plan 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 your writing time this is going to be crucial during NaNoWriMo this is something that you cannot fly by the seat of your pants on you may be able to fly by the seat of your pants on your plot and your characters and um, whether you're writing a first person, third person, all that jazz, you might be able to just kind of see where things go with all that. But when it comes to the time that you're going to write every day, I don't recommend it, people. I don't recommend it. I recommend having a schedule. I recommend you saying, I'm going to set my alarm for 5 a.m. and for 5 to 6, I have to write because by 7.30, I got to be on my way to work. That's my personal schedule. So I'm just giving that as an example. I recommend, you know what, I get home from work at 5.30, I'm going to cook, walk my dogs, make sure my kids are fed, da 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 da, -da. and then from 8 to 9 p.m. every day, that's my writing time. I'm going to go into my little corner, close the door, put on my headphones, do whatever I have to do, get underneath the blanket with my flashlight and my laptop, do 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 for that hour, that is my time. For those two hours, that is my time. For that 30 minutes, that is my time. That is what I recommend. You need to schedule it into your day. Whether you're someone that has a planner, like a physical planner, or you, you know, put it into your phone, or you use, you know, Google Calendar, or you have a physical calendar that's up, like the family calendar that's on the fridge or on the bulletin board, where everyone's like, you know, practices. Although with COVID, you know, everyone's like, you know, appointments and this and this and this and online school from this and this. You need to prioritize it. Just like you have your kids' online schedule and you have your, your, your husband's this or your partner's this on the, on the bulletin board, on the family calendar. If you're single, just like you have your, you know, I'm going to do this and this is my day for cleaning and this is my day for... Whatever it is that you usually put on your calendar, 
However you keep a planner, calendar, whatever you do, you need to schedule in your writing because if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, there will be so many excuses. Oh, you know, I had to do this. This came up. This came up. A friend called me in crisis. This happened. Put your phone on. Just do not disturb. Unplug your internet if you have to. Sequester yourself and threaten people on pain of death to not bother you and stick to your schedule. Stick to your time. If you don't, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Reach out to other writers, especially now in 2020. So many of us are isolated. A lot of us are still in quarantine. Some of us haven't been out in months, haven't had any social interaction with people or very limited interaction. A lot of us might be depressed right now or going through mental health issues due to just, you know, the side effects of being quarantined and separated from humanity for so long. So I recommend that you reach out to other writers. I'm not sure how NaNoWriMo is doing it this year because quite frankly, I haven't been on the site yet. I plan on going on later today and, you know, starting my project and, you know, making sure everything looks good. So just make sure you reach out to other writers on the site. It's super easy to find people. Um, even in people in your area, it's even easier to find people in your area. I don't know how they're gonna be doing, like I said earlier, I don't know how they'll be doing the meetups this year with the writing meetups. They usually do them depending on your area. It might be on via Zoom or you know, online this year, even better. Just don't continue to isolate yourself. You need a support system. You need people to hold you accountable. You need people to write with. You need people to be there for you on days where your story's not going well, or let's say it's day three and you haven't even written a thousand words yet. You just need that support. And I'm always available. I always leave my NaNoWriMo uh, page in the description. So please feel free to come find me, send me a message if you need a pep talk, if you need encouragement, if you need whatever you need, I am 100% available in there because I have been there. My last and final tip is make sure that you're writing something that you're actually going to enjoy writing and that fills you with like anticipation and that you look forward to working on every day. If maybe you have a story idea and then you start working on it and you're, you just dread, you dread your scheduled writing time. You're just like, ugh, and you're stuck and you just, I mean, that honestly are a lot of clues and red flags that you're just, you're just not happy with the story idea and you're not happy with it and you're not passionate or excited about the story and you need, to, you need to switch some things up. Maybe come up with a new story idea, maybe brainstorm, maybe try to figure out what it is about what you have right now that is making you disinterested in your own story. So you want to make sure that you're having fun, that whatever it is that you choose to write about, that you're excited about it, that it is something that fills you with anticipation and happiness and joy and is your little nice little escape from life when you go to write during your scheduled writing time. I have made tons of other NaNoWriMo tips videos that are way better than this one because I just threw this together, y'all. The 2020 version is like the rest of 2020, a dumpster fire. But I will link all of my other NaNoWriMo tips and tricks videos. I definitely highly, highly recommend you check them out because like I said, they're way better than this video, filled with way more tips and just overall better planned out. So I will link all of them here and down below wherever you link things on these days in these YouTube streets. And I will catch y'all a little later. I'm going to cobble this video together and throw it up. And I will see y'all day one of NaNoWriMo. I think I'm gonna vlog this year. I'm not 100% sure. I might do like one minute of each day, but then that's a 30 minute vlog. Mm. Maybe I'll do 30 seconds of each day. That could be fun. All right, y'all. I'll catch you in my next video. Mwah! Happy Halloween. Happy Nanoing. Stay safe. Love y'all. Bye.